Hi, my name is Mike and I own Mike's Carburetor Parts. You can find uh, parts for most carburetors at uh, www.mikescarburetor.com um, I'm working on a Holley 4 barrel 4000 model uh, commonly called the teapot and I'm rebuilding this for uh, a gentleman uh, in, in Canada and uh, I'm starting out with a float ball. This will uh, be a series of videos. Uh, um, it's pretty involved, this carburetor, and uh, um, I take quite a while to do this one particular carburetor because they got to be done right or they leak and, and have all kinds of problems. Uh, uh, typically, the 4000s, uh, they'll have problems leaking. Um, they have problems uh, accelerating, sometimes hesitation. Um, and one other problem they have a lot of times during the hot weather is uh, um, <clears throat> percolation, especially the fuels these days. Uh, so th that's kind of the common problems with this one, and uh, we try to build them to uh, circumvent most of that. At any rate, I'm going to start with a float bowl, and uh, we're going to assemble it in this video. And we start with the main jets. Main jets are available uh, still, by the way. And uh, they go down in here, and the bottom now I try to do these videos uh, without using a bunch of special tools I do have all these special tools for putting this in but the average person doesn't have them um, so when I put in like a main jet I use a screwdriver uh, wide enough to uh, cover the whole jet so it doesn't chip it Okay, next we'll put in the power valve, and um, here's the gasket for it. Don't forget the gasket. Goes in the bigger hole in the bottom. Now to clean these carburetors, I use uh, um, My mind just went blank. Uh, well, I clean it in my uh, carburetor cleaner uh, tank, and uh, and I'll think of the name of it here in a second. And then I uh, soda blast them. And on this particular carburetor, I don't color them or anything because they're, they're, the natural color looks really good. And so I just soda blast them, and then I put it back in the cleaner and make sure we get all the soda out of it, blow it out, and dry it, and everything. Okay, and we have our main, uh, let's see, what are these called? i got to look at the paper here. I, uh, I want to say main jet, but that isn't what they are. They're um, <clears throat> too early in the morning. I can't think. These are the, dis the main discharge jets. And what happens is the, the fuel will uh, come up through here, uh, through this jet, up this orifice here back down this tube and they'll come out here yeah we got one on each side okay uh, next thing is we're going to put um, the check ball into the accelerator pump reservoir here uh, and you basically will have uh, two different size check balls uh, with this carburetor you got a big one which goes in the secondary uh, uh, diaphragm and you got smaller ones and uh, the smaller one goes into the accelerator pump and just make sure it drops in the hole and then you have this clip that goes in there and and uh, this part of the clip right here uh, goes right on top of the ball to keep the ball in there and what this ball is for is a check ball and uh, it's so that when you uh, press down the accelerator pump and it, start, it wants to push fuel uh, through the carburetor in the Venturi, 
uh, that check ball will go down and plug up the hole and that's the hole where it usually pulls in gas that way it's put, pushing gas out through the carburetor not back into the float bowl and that's basically it so don't forget it's there if you have a, a, a bad hesitation problem when you try to accelerate uh, it could be that you didn't get the ball in there I do see them sometimes with the ball missing I think people lose the ball out of it and then they just leave it out. Can't do that. Okay, I got it down in there. I got to get it turned around here. Okay. Okay. Take care of that. All right. Now the bit. A pump discharge weight goes in this hole right here. See a little point on the end of it? Uh, it goes down to plug up a hole. And it goes in there like that. Uh, the next thing we will do is uh, we'll put the float in here. Uh, take the needle off of here. And underneath the float is a uh, spring, which of course is tangled up with the rest of the parts. Okay, and you see the little tab on the end. This is a very light spring, and I uh, just put it through the hole in the uh, float. I'm putting a new float into this carburetor. Um, I have uh, quite a few uh, NOS floats that I sell. Um, they don't make them anymore. I just happened to have uh, acquired a whole box of them here a while back. And uh, anyway, that spring is uh, underneath the float, and that just keeps it helps it keep it from. Uh, uh, jumping up and down uh, when you're going down the road, especially on a rough road. So it just makes the float run a little smoother. Okay, floats down there, pin and goes in through the outside here. Okay. Then we have the uh, needle and seat, and uh, it goes down here. Okay. Now we got to get the uh, there's that little wire hooked on top of the needle, and uh, it, it's got to wrap around the float tab. Okay, there we go. And what that does is uh, it will, uh, when the float's going down like this, it will help pull that needle out and let the fuel in. That way it doesn't get stuck closed. Now, we got a, a spring that goes in here and that's going to help hold that needle and seat down. And we got our plug with the gasket on it. Okay, now if that's in, we can adjust our float, which I uh, have already done here, but uh, when you to adjust this, uh, you simply measure from the top of your float bowl to the top of your float, and uh, this is real critical on, the, on this one to get this one this correct, or you're going to have uh, a floating problems or also, an, an, uh, that can also cause an accelerator problem. Um, <clears throat> sometimes I, uh, when I test this carburetor, I may have, adjust this flow up and down a little bit depending on how it's acting okay so uh, that's the float so you see the the float ba is basically level and that's generally uh, where they're at but uh, check your specs and make sure uh, let's see okay accelerator pump now <clears throat> I already put this one together but you see the big spring goes on here 
Um, you got your uh, the new pump. Here's a little clip. Let's see, I just might as well take it apart here so you can see how it really works. Okay, so here we go. All right, there you go. So here's the new pump. You put your now sometimes uh, certain kits will come with uh, just the cup to put on here, but uh, I think all my kits come with the uh, pump itself. And uh, so you put the spring over, it goes like this. Try and hold it so you it doesn't go flying across the room. It's kind of the thing I usually do. Okay, push it up and uh, put your clip on it. Retainer clip. Okay, there you go. And sits down that little recess right there, and that's your accelerator pump. Now, before I put it in there, I'm going to lubricate it with some uh, silicon spray lubricant. Oh, by the way, um, it's already in here. There's a little kind of a felt washer that goes in here, and uh, it's, it's it, it'll it'll sit right here. And so you look in your kit and you find your little felt washer, and oh, it's probably an eighth inch thick or so, and you stick in that hole there. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Make sure this is real good and clean. You want this to to uh, <clears throat> have some good action, not bind or anything. Uh, if it does, you're going to have acceleration problems. So make sure that's just, if you just get everything really clean, it will, uh, uh, and then put some silicon lubricant on it. You'll see, see how it, it just, you'll have some nice action. Okay, you see when I do that, how it's pushing this uh, check, check ball, or check weight up. That's a good sign. Okay, so, and of course, uh, uh, before I started putting all this together, I made sure all the orifices are clean. Um, you've got some uh, the small discharge tubes right here just you know runs a wire through it uh, make sure everything is, is just uh, uh, clean as I think personally about 90 percent of uh, rebuilding a carburetor <coughs> that's what it's all about alright so now we got that in there and uh, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let's see I won't put the gasket on yet but I'm gonna get the gasket ready uh, by spraying some uh, silk and spray lubricant on it and that will uh, help it bring it back to life, make it a little more pliable, and also keeps it from uh, sticking if I ever need to take it apart again. And so let's quick, quickly uh, put the top on now, or top together, excuse me. Uh, we got the economizer uh, or power, oh jeez, what do you call this thing? It's a... Uh, <laughs> Uh, diaphragm stem economizer, just what I said to start with. Okay, this part right here is what hits your, uh, you, uh, hits your, uh, opens your power valve, and this is vacuum operated. So when you really need the power, and uh, when you step on your gas, you're going to lose vacuum, and when that happens, um, this thing gets released and it goes down and and uh, pushes the uh, little stem on your uh, power valve here and and opens that up and lets you yet more fuel into the uh, Venturi. Alright, so back to the top. Um, we got our little uh, secondary, so excuse me. Uh, <clears throat> so on our economizer here we have uh, three holes, one small one and two big ones. Okay, we'll line it up so that the two big ones go on the inside and that simply accommodates the uh, secondary tubes here. And uh, they screw in two of the holes. A little trouble getting that started. Oh, I see the rubber's in the way. And we want to make sure. I don't want to crinkle up the rubber. There we go. Push, it, push, uh, push this down with the spring, take tension off that rubber, it'll flatten out better. <clears throat> Alright, and then there's a small screw that goes in the third smaller hole over here. Okay. 
And I have these economizers uh, available uh, by themselves, incidentally. I think they're listed on my site. They, of course, come in the kit. Come in my kit, anyway. I don't know about anybody else. Okay, those are snug down, put that together. Okay, I'm going to get the gasket on here. Okay, on here rather. I'll we'll get her together. Okay, so there's all these little connectors there. All right. Take a quick, another quick look. Make sure I didn't forget something. It looks like I got everything there. Just push down. We'll hold it down so we get the top on. Now let's put a little more lubricant in it. Not hurt. Oh, another thing. Uh, I already did these, but uh, I do these separately. There's little metal uh, washers going here, and then you kind of peen the edge to hold them in there. And uh, that's going to be to hold the secondary tubes. Uh, these big long ones here, remember taking those off, will go in there, and you want them to fit pretty snug. Put new screws in these. Going on a classic car, it should look good. Okay, and that's the float bowl assembly. So your pump still moving freely. And there you go. So I'll post this video and then uh, move on to the next in the part of it and uh, make a video on that. We'll probably have uh, at least two, maybe three uh, videos in this series. And thanks for watching.